I am so sorry I'm not here in person with you. When I found out your conference was on the same date as the conference in Northeast, I knew that I had to attend the Northeast conference because they haven't had a conference for 20 years and we're trying to rebuild Sarah in the Northeast. So it is um, just a, a great opportunity for us to help the Sarans there and I'm in Philadelphia, but I'm happy to welcome you to the Abbey and thank you for being Sarans and I'm glad you're here. You know, my goal in life is to grow in holiness and to leave a legacy of faith and action for my children and grandchildren. Through my involvement in Sarah and saying yes to requests to do more, my kids see my actions and my actions speak louder than my words. I'd like to share a famous quote from a, a saint, a brand new saint, St. John Henry Newman. It goes like this, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. If we are working to be saints, we have to accept the mission the Lord has put in our life. And you know what? I truly believe as a Saren, if you're in this room, the Lord has this as part of your mission. You're not here by accident. The Lord has put this ministry on your heart. And this mission is committed to you. Sarah can be a path to holiness for each one of us. You know, every one of us wants to be a saint someday. And with the help of Sarah, I think it will help me get there. When my son Bishop Andrew was ordained a priest, I asked him how I should be serving the church. You know, I had taught at a public school for over 20 years, and I had a little good Catholic guilt about teaching in a Catholic, uh, public school and hadn't taught in the Catholic schools. And so I was concerned about how I could serve the church in my retirement. So when I asked Drew, as I call him, when I asked Drew what I should do to serve the church, he responded, hands down, Mom, you have to be a Saren because Sarah is helping to have more religious vocations. And without religious vocations, we will not have a church. It's the priesthood that brings us the Eucharist, the center of our faith. So this is so terribly important. So it is really very, very important that we have stepped forward in this ministry. You know, uh, Bishop Andrew was our past Episcopal advisor. And when he was leaving his job as our Episcopal advisor, he said to, uh, to us, to all of us Sarans, the time now with the problems in the church is a time to step up, not to back down. It's a time to be strong. It's a time that we really need to give more than we've ever given before and work harder than we've ever worked before. So I challenge you each as Sarans to not give up the ship, to realize that we are here, we're soldiers working for the Lord. You know, sometimes people say, talk about their dues. I wanna talk about our dues. Dues, you know, I think of dues as the best investment I can make in the future of the church. Think about it. My dues, the small amount I pay to Sarah International and the U.S. Consul, we are doing great work with those dues. So this is an investment. And if you think of it that way, it's just a couple good dinners out and you have your Sarah dues paid and we are doing good things with those Sarah dues. For example, I'm gonna be talking about the Sarah Spark, our beautiful new website for vocation directors and vocation promoters. I'm going to be talking about Parish Vocation Ministry Training, a brand new program we just started, and our Seven Sarans Prayer Warrior Teams. And of course, the U.S. Consul is doing other things with, for you too, providing you with updated vocation materials. We're committed um, to conference calls and sharing good ideas and all these great things in the Sarah Magazine and many ways that we can help you be good Sarans. So Sarah has stepped up to the plate and we've taken a more important role in the vocation ministry in our church. I want to share with you how this Sarah Spark digital resource got started. You know, um, this resource started at a request from Father Ralph O'Donnell. I think many of you know Father Ralph. He's from Omaha, and he actually has been serving as a secretariat for clergy and consecrated life for vocations at the United States Council of Catholic Bishops, the USCCB. 
Sometimes this Sarah stuff is like alphabet soup, all these letters, but most of us know the USCCB. And Father Ralph was there serving and with Rose Sullivan, who is the director of the National Council of Diocesan Vocation Directors, NCDVD, they got together and they came to Sarah and they asked us to make a digital resource for vocation directors through Sarah's support and your dues and grants from the Sarah International Foundation and contribution, contributions from members, Sarah's Park was launched. And today there's a beautiful website of vocation activities for vocation directors across our nation and our country. And we should not underestimate how valuable Sarah's Park is. I wanna share three examples to you. Number one, I had a vocation director at one of the NCDVD conferences where we display and talk about Sarah Spark. He came up to me and he said, you know, I'm only a half-time vocation director and I don't even have a secretary. It is so wonderful. I can go to Sarah Spark, download a vocation activity, brand it with the name of my diocese and use it. I don't have to recreate the wheel. I can just use your material. And I laughed and told him, all you have to do is decorate the wheel a little bit and off you go. You know, teachers have shared how valuable the new lesson plans for the school traveling crucifix vocation kit are. Now, some of our teachers have used those vocation kits for three years. So guess what? We have three years of lesson plans on the website. And to get them, all you have to do is go to the school traveling crucifix kit and go down to the resources at the bottom and you can print out those new lesson plans. So if you've been passing out those vocation kits and a lot of people have, I know, make certain you're sending a link to the lesson plans to the teachers or even printing them out for the teachers. Our um, club in, from the St. Paul area, St. Paul, Minnesota or, Saint, or Minneapolis, we're in the Twin Cities Club. We actually printed out the third year lesson plans and mail them to every Catholic school in the Archdiocese because all 79 Catholic elementary schools have the traveling crucifix kits. The other thing that's been really great, the parish has been, um, parishes have been excited that the traveling chalice program is now on the website in Spanish. So if people would like that in Spanish, it's there. We honor the request of everyone using and try to put things up that are very usable for people. If you have not used sarahspark.org, sarahspark.org, please go there. Um, I have a great line, I always forget it exactly. I'm gonna give a little sign here. It says, Sarah Spark, your one-stop shop for vocation activities. Easy to find, easy to use, available 24 seven. One stop shop for vocation needs. Wow, that's wonderful. That we can go someplace, find the things we need and make them work for us. Okay, now, you know, we have been invited to the NCDVD conference for vocation directors for the last um, three years. And this year, the council or the NCDVD asked us to present something new. They wanted us to start having parish vocation ministry trainings. And so that's exactly what we have done. We have put together a beautiful program on parish vocation ministry trainings. And we are um, actually doing these free of charge to dioceses around the United States. And we've had our first one. In fact, Richard Arians, who's going to talk to you right after this video, he actually attended and helped with the first parish vocation ministry workshop in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So we're here. Know that this is a good thing. If a diocese can get five to 10 parishes together and they pick a date and a location and provide lunch for all the people that attend the workshop, we're on, we'll come help you out and we will provide a wonderful workshop to help parishes form parish vocation ministries. But not only will we help you form them, we're hoping to have a mentor for every parish vocation ministry team so that we can help sustain those parish vocation ministries in the parishes. This is really, you know, it's going to work and it's going to help us have more religious vocations across our country. 
I hope and pray you've already heard of the third new project supporting our vocation directors because I've been working very hard putting together 300 prayer teams for vocation directors. So you're probably, I hope your club received a nice flyer about a vocation director we would like you to pray for. And it had on that vocation, it had his name, his address, so you could send him a card and encourage him. And it also had all the days of the week. So we could have one individual sign up for each day of the week and then pray for that vocation director by name for the next year on that day. So let's say I'm Tuesday. If I'm Tuesday, on Tuesday, I might go to mass, offer my mass and communion for the vocation director. And then what I will do is maybe stay and say a rosary afterwards for him and I have my hour in. I don't know if any of you have that Sarah handbook. It has beautiful rosaries for, for priests and you can just put in the name of your vocation director and pray for him. You know, it's hard for you to really realize how important this praying for vocation directors are. These young men, about a third of them are new every year across our country. And the young men that became priests really weren't aiming to be a vocation director. They were wanting to serve as a priest in a diocese, in a parish, and minister to families. But guess what? The bishop has picked one of them for this job they'd rather not have, and they have accepted out of obedience, accepted the challenge to be a vocation director. One young man came over to our table at the NCDVD and he said, you know, I haven't been very happy about being a vocation director, but I know your prayer is going to help me a lot. And another vocation director wrote us a note. And here's what it said. Thank you for all your generous prayers. It's really wonderful to know I have someone praying for me by name every day. Since the work of a vocation director is vital to the health and future of the church, the evil one is quick to discourage us and place obstacles in our way, trying to keep us from moving forward. Your prayers help remove these obstacles and give us the grace to move forward. What a blessing that we can be prayer warriors for the soldiers that are on the front line recruiting young men to be priests and young women to serve in religious vocations. You know, as Sarans, you can be proud of these three special tasks. Sarah Spark, the Parish Vocation Ministry Training, and the Seven Sarans Program. We are busy, we are working, we are serving the church. And by pooling our resources and our efforts, we can increase the number of religious vocations across our country. So I want you to realize your dues are a critical part of this, these programs. They are helping our church recruit more religious vocations. Thank you. Thank you for being a part in making Sarah a well-respected vocation ministry in our Catholic church. Thank you for working to promote and support religious vocations. And thank you for working to grow in your own holiness. Maybe someday, as I always tell my grandchildren, someday we're going to dance together in heaven. So maybe someday us Sarans can do a few dances together in heaven too. So thank you for being a Saran and get out there and do a good job. You know, there's so much work to be done and we can do it. God bless.